Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 16 of Direwolf20's server play series. I'm on Forgecraft with Warwax, Tog, Slowpoke, uh, who else do we have in TeamSpeak? I think I hear a Marathi poking around. Uh, hey Mist. Yo. What you guys all up to? I am um, playing games and coding. Playing games and coding. Well, I'm doing stuff too. I'm being distracted by MMOs. Oh, I'm encouraging tank to grow. Talking about MMOs, I'm not going to stay on this for very long, but I got a beta key for Elder Scrolls Online yesterday. Oh, I hate it. Uh, you're going to have to tell me how it is, because like, I like, both want to and don't want to play that game. <laughs> it, it's yeah. only for this weekend coming up at the oh. moment. Um, but it's a weekend beta test this weekend. I've heard bad things, I will be honest, but... Well, MMO betas are always a little bit rough, which is why I usually yes. don't like to jump into them, because I like to experience the game, like, when it's good, like, not when it's a little rusty still. Mm -hmm. Like, and that sounds funny, me playing, like, as many, you know, early versions of mods and stuff, but, you know. MMOs are slightly different, aren't they? Yeah. I've been mean, having fun in Landmark. EQ's landmark. A lot of people are playing that landmark, but... It's a building game. It's basically... They're going for... It's EverQuest-type worlds. Um, but they're going for the voxel Minecraft building type thing. Yeah. It's like exploration, gathering, and building shiny yeah, But that's... I mean, that's only part of the game, isn't it? It's not the full yes. game. You know, yep. It's just yes. like the... I, I have to be honest. I, I've looked at the screenshots. I'm not overly impressed. They're going for... Have you seen the cartoon Frozen? Yes. Or animated thing Frozen? They're going for that animated Disney look. Yeah. And I, I actually don't mind it. At all. I don't They're know why. They're looking for it to be fun. I, mean, and... I was a big EverQuest fan. I was a big EverQuest fan. I, I'm just looking at screenshots yep. and... It's, I don't know. Well, anyway. I think, um, heavy, I think they've been heavily influenced oh, nice. by games like Borderlands. I haven't had a chance to look at it all yet, too much, to be honest with you. Well, I'm having fun in Landmark. I wouldn't make up mind a poke at ESO, but at the same time, I'm starting to hear more bad about it than good, so I'm like, eh, too many other games to play. Um... <laughs> and, and mods to write. <laughs> yeah. Get back to work. I actually should be slow at shouting at me because I'm... Um, Yes, I'm, he's the best mod for me. Yeah, it's that mod I'm being distracted by. I'm, I'm playing Final Fantasy at the moment. Yes, uh, I actually commissioned him to make mod, and he's not making it. Uh, well, uh, I, hey, I, I refuse, as in every case, I refuse the commission. You know uh, I refuse the commission. <laughs> um, Diet, are you mentioning anything about that? Do you know what that is? Pop a TS. I will be at some point, yes, but not today. Okay. What I'm doing today is building an automatic system for pulverizing, smelting, induction smelting, and also I want to build a magma crucible slash fluid transposer automation system with applied energistics. And I've kind of got a good way to do it. I think that'll work rather well. Did you look at mine? Uh, I did not. Disk, disk. Um, a, a system to it do uses what? a subnetwork. Oh, does it use the subnetwork to to like make tesseracts with AE? That's right, and I only need one flow transposer magma crucible for all of my recipes. Neat. I was just gonna use um item ducts. Problem with that though is I think when you do that, you need multiple uh, liquid transposers and magma crucibles like Tag has set up. Really. I'm gonna try it my way because it should shouldn't be too bad, honestly. But you can't have one magma, one magma, one fluid to do everything. Is that what you're saying? To do every fluid recipe. Yeah. Yeah. I I could definitely do that myself. The only reason I didn't is in case for some reason I had like part of the recipe, like I had the liquid but not the other part. And yeah, I didn't want it getting stuck. Definitely um, want a, a different machine per liquid. 
What happened hey, to all the automatic production of stuff in the workshop? Did someone uh, break I it? I think it died. Why did it die? I don't know. Blame Soren. Soren broke it? Oh, he tried to turn it into an AE system? <laughs> uh, no, I I have no idea what he did. Uh, it's just, you know. I heard it here first. Soren broke it. Wait, you're out of power in the workshop? No. There's plenty of power in the ME controller. So what's the problem? I don't know. But what's it not doing that you should be doing? Uh, it's not doing things. Oh, there's... <laughs> Good description. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out, like, hey, what... <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what this is supposed to be doing. Um, there's an ME drive here. <laughs> And there's a bunch of stuff that looks like it would be working. Maybe it is Might working, but there's no way to pull it out of the system. <laughs> Does anybody know? Can you put fortune on a grafter? I no, don't think so. I don't think so. I think grafters are basically uh, you can use it and it's beneficial, and that's it. I don't even know if it is actually beneficial in there. Oh, right, there you go. I found the sapling. It's only beneficial in relation to forestry plants. Yep. Ah, right, okay. They took durability off them, didn't they? Um, kind of cool. I don't know. Uh, well, if I'm not mistaken, the NPR ones, I've got the two NPR grafters shears, and neither of them have got the durability. Grafter, yeah, the NPR grafter, I believe, definitely works on more leaves. Or it did at one point. Oh, that's terrible. You're the what kind of a grafter? The NPS, oh. the modular power suits that you put in the glove. Ah, yeah, those. It definitely don't... gave you. It gave you, uh, it uh, to a certain extent. I think it was the specific types of trees it didn't work on, but in general, it's that you used up energy and it's every single leaf block you hit with it would give you a sapling. Oh, there is trees. a thing up here. I missed this. I wasn't paying attention. I guess I missed that. That actually did exist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, instead of barrels, it's now an ME system. That makes sense-ish. Oh, uh. What, Jabba and FC1? Dang it. It looks like it's yeah, still no, barrels. Right. Oh, what are you doing? Uh, I'm in the workshop at the moment. All right, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm not sure. The correct answer is fix your API. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I'm the API sure. that Tog's rewriting anything. because Direwolf did such a bad job with it? No, no, I didn't. I did not say you did a bad job with it. I said I, I wanted to rewrite it. I'm pretty sure you did. To be fair. I'm I mean, really... in my opinion, if somebody does a good job with something, you don't have to redo it. I believe the accurate and truthful quote was, Oh my gosh, Direwolf is such a bad code or I am better. I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where we were at. Right <laughs> I'm going to leave this connected here, even though I don't really need it. But I'm leaving it there. We're going to see if this works. So this is me testing out an idea for how this could work. So Rorax, come here and tell me what I'm doing wrong here. Um, okay. Well, you don't have to. I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, it only takes me a second. Yeah. Redstone signal low. And we'll let anything come out of here, and then we'll filter Teleport. into here. Oh. So basically, and then we also can. Is anybody near a bed? Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, mine's up the stairs, but I'd mean I'd have to leave the computer. Can I just hit him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, please, you know, please do. <laughs> it, and I'm. I'm I mean, I'll drive to Scotland off. just to smack him behind the head. <laughs> Thank you. You know you're welcome to visit anything. He wasn't All even right. on. I'm not in the age either. So the first thing I'm going to do is set it up so it can make pyrothium dust and enderium blend. Ooh, the enderium blend is going to be interesting. This is going to be our first test, guys, enderium blend. If we can pull this off, we should be good. So we're going to need some um, tin and that stuff. All right, cool. So let's see if we can make enderium automated with applied energistics. This will actually be kind of tough. Uh, pulverized coal, sulfur dust, and blaze powder. How are we for blazes in general? 
All right, we're good with blaze powder. Now I have an automated blaze cold. anything. Yeah, that's a, one of the only things I'm lacking now. I should show you my prison complex. Oh? That's worrying. That is worrying. <laughs> Getting me to villagers. Actually, now. you should go and see her prison complex. It is fairly... Did you do our plan with the testificate? No, not yet. Oh, but, you need to do but that. But I have the name tag. Oh, I made really. export buses. Derp. Oh, talking about testificates. You, you, yeah, you guys are going to have a laugh. We're, we're going to do a Die Wolf 20 prison. I don't it's like the sound of that. I, I, I actually kind of do like it. It imprisoned think... all the Die Wolf 20s? All yes. of them? What's funny about villagers? Yes, and process them in a MFR grinder. Forever spawning constantly. This does not being sound like spawned a good thing. and being grinded into tiny direwolf particles and then used to spawn more direwolves. I I don't think the world is prepared for more than one. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're having to lock the extra ones up. Yeah. Also, it's like you, you do that, all you're gonna do is end up with a direwolf 21, 22, 23. It's not quite the same. <laughs> it's new and tasty. <laughs> All right, let's see how we are for sulfur dust, guys. Oh, you know what else I want to do this episode? I want to... I want to get a quarry going. Does the quarry have Ender in its name? It probably does. Cool. Have you tried it yet? Oh, yes. <laughs> I've tried it twice. How do you like it? It's super cool. How does it deal with uh, lava? Is it good with lava? Or do you still have to do like water buckets or something? It completely ignores lava. <clears throat> oh, does it? Yeah. So it doesn't It doesn't have a problem, but you also don't get obsidian from it. Yeah. Okay, well that's Unless cool. the obsidian is ah. already formed, of course. Well, yeah, of course. Right, okay. Cool. All right, YouTube, let me get a little bit of the stuff ready that I want to do here. Ah, I'm trapped. And <laughs> uh, I'll be back in a few minutes when I'm ready to... Uh, in, in after this crazy plan of mine all right guys we're back so i'm ready to give this thing a shot so basically i've got everything ready uh so in order to make what we need to make here some enderium ingots okay we need enderium blend which is uh tin dust which is easy to make obviously shiny uh pulverized shiny metal and then we need resonant ender buckets the only way to get a resonant ender bucket is to melt down uh four ender pearls okay and uh put it in a bucket Okay, so resonant ender bucket. So 1.0 of resonant ender, and you get 0.25 per ender pearl. So we have to dump four ender pearls into a magma crucible, and we have to put a bucket into the fluid transposer. So what I'll do is put the recipe like so. We're going to say, um, can I get enderium bucket to show up over here? Uh, resonant ender. I wonder if I can shift click this anyway. I don't think I can. All right, so we're gonna have to get a resonant ender bucket in order for this to work before I can really test it, but we need to make a couple of these anyway, so we'll be fine. So basically, let's get ourselves a resonant ender bucket the old fashioned way. So we put four ender pearls in here, and we'll put a bucket in here. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to program this guy as a whitelist, and we'll say ignore stuff. I don't care about NBT or, or dictionary. We're going to whitelist ender pearls are allowed to go in here. And we're going to whitelist um, buckets into here. Does that sound cool? So that way, when this thing, we're going to program it so that bucket plus ender pearl goes into the chest and then it gets pulled out and the bucket will go in here and the ender pearls will go in here. Sound like a plan? You're done good. Does that work? Yeah. So we come over um, here and we say four ender pearls. And let's get ourselves a bucket, which I already taught my A system how to make. That's pretty simple, right? Did you do the order? Did I do the order? What? Oh, no, I didn't yet. I'm, uh, I'm putting the recipe in here now, so let's see. That would be, uh, there we go. 
one resident ender. And over here, we need a uh, pulverized shiny metal, pulverized coal, and pulverized tin. And I'm going to put all this stuff away. The only thing that might be a little bit of a hokiness of a problem, and we're going to have to run into it as we get to it. Um, it's something I can fix. But it might require just changing up this. When I request the tin, it's going to auto-export it into that system, I'm afraid. We're going to see what happens. All right, so here we go. Resin and Ender. Um, so Enderium... I can program the Enderium recipe now too, right? So I should be able to request Enderium straight up. Um, or Enderium blend. Yes. Because that's... Where is that? Enderium blend, where are you? Right, so I should be able to get that. And that gives me four of these. Right? Yes. So I should be able to say, give me one, and everything should happen automatically. So are things happening over there, Rorax? Yes. Cool. The ender is processing, so we're just waiting for it to fill the bucket. And there nice. you go. That's basic import bus. So it should have pulled the bucket out. Awesome. And it's pulverizing tin right now. And it is doing exactly what I thought it might do. The tin's getting pulled up into here. You can see the tin dust showing up up here. So I can fix this. That's not a problem. I'm going to active with signal this guy. We can solve that problem. So how are we doing? There we go. Hooray, we got Enderium Blend. Awesome. So that works, right? Pretty cool. Okay. And Pyrothium Dust, I think we taught our AE system how to make. So now all I have to do is say how to make Enderium. So Enderium is a combination of one dust, two blend, gives me two ingots. Two blend, one pyrothium dust, so that should be pretty simple. And that goes into an induction smelter, like so. And this thing will cook up and get me the enderium that I need. So once we've got that guy ready, and he should get pulled into the AE system automatically, slowly but surely, but he'll still go. There it goes. Now I can teach this guy over here and say two Enderium blend, one Pyrothium yields two of you in code. And up here is where you go. Ah. We really have to move like this thing out of this hole. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it needs to happen. Uh, so ME encoded pattern goes here. And I think what I'll do is, even though I'm pretty sure that this isn't necessary anymore because I think he changed it, I'm still going to point these guys down just to make sure that they know where to go. Cool. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So now, finally, we should be able to say, hey, how do we make an ender doohickey? Or no, we want a tesseract. So in order for an empty tesseract frame, we need to just do this and code. You should be able to craft everything you need to get this. Except maybe hardened glass. So you know what I should do is get some obsidian. So pulverized obsidian, you get four per obsidian. And then hardened glass. We need eight and one lead. So what did I say that was? Four per obsidian, encode that. And then Eight and one lead, right? 
Eight and one lead gets you two, is it? Yes. I'm wondering if you'll catch on to the problem that I discovered. What's that? It involves only using one induction furnace. Uh, maybe. Go on. Because you are doing your enderium ingots in the induction smelter, as well as your hardened glass, when you order a tesseract, it's going to try and do both the um, hardened glass and the enderium at the same time, if it mm. can, and one slot will get occupied with the wrong resource and gum up your induction furnace. Well, that stinks. So you have to, like, get it to stagger the production of your hardened glass and your enderium somehow. Or gotcha. use two induction furnaces. Correct. I'll figure something out. So let's see. Can I now request a tesseract frame? Rather than stagger your hardened glass, why don't you just keep a store of it? That's I was thinking, I did. yeah, probably I mean, wind up doing that eventually. Because you always use hardened glass. Yeah, you do. And I could, I could easily do that. All right, so this time through it didn't do that. But that's not to say that next time through it won't do that. All right, I've got a Tesseract frame. Sweet. Now we want to do something similar. So in order to fill up this Tesseract frame, uh, we need to fill it with four Ender Pearls worth of liquid. So we do something similar. Let me request another one. Begin. Because we're going to need two anyway. Uh, and I'll get some Ender Pearls. Actually, let me get four of them. How are you doing? I have to check on my induction furnace to see if I'm having that issue. Not yet. Hear that of the server. Just, nope, we're good. All right, it's still crafting. Come on now. There you go. It's doing its thing. Ah, yeah, you're right, Vorax. Same thing happened. Hmm. It's a pain. Yeah. What I could do... Well, there's a couple things we could do. I'll sort out something. At least for now, though. Hmm. Yes, that could be tricky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and tell this guy... Come on now. Whitelist Tesseract frames as well. And this guy's already whitelisted Ender Pearl, so we don't have to worry about that. Still going? Come on. Is the server being laggy or is it just me being laggy? Uh, it might be the server. Oh, I see what's happening. Yeah, it did gum it up pretty good, didn't it? All right, guys, so we do have a little bit of a problem here that we're going to have to figure out a workaround to. I agree, we might need to go with a second induction smelter. I mean, it's not the end of the world if we have to do that, but it would be neat if I could find a better way. I mean, I could do something similar to what I've got over there with item ducks, but I don't know. I'll have to figure something out. All right, uh, so I should have my empty Tesseract frame now. So we will automate this whole thing for sure, but for now I just need a full frame so I can teach the recipe. Back in a moment. All right, guys, so this is as easy as saying now that one empty Tesseract frame and four of these guys yields one of these in code. And then I just do this in code. 
and this one goes in here, and now we should be getting Tesseracts. Again, the only problem we're having is that induction smelter, which I want to sort out and figure out a solution to right now, so I'll be back in a minute. But this should be pretty good. Alright guys, I'm going with Rorox's approach, because it is probably just the most simple and basic way to go. I like it, Rorox, it works for me. Let's go. Yeah, how that yeah there's not a lot of other options for it, I'm, I'm afraid. Yeah, I mean, any option other than this one would just be needlessly complicated, like, silly. Kiss approach. Yeah, exactly. Keep it simple, stupid. Alright, so that solves this problem. We just take one of these guys, doesn't matter which one, out and put him over here. And then you should be able to process the glass, and you will process the enderium. And we'll kind of do that because we're going to have lots of things that these um, induction furnaces process. So that'll work with that. Now, to solve this problem over here, that's a little bit different. In fact, we're probably... Hmm, you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to not do this. So we don't want to pulverize all the dust that enters our system. Because if we did that, well, then that would be a problem. Because we're, you know, dealing with dusts regularly so let's break these guys off and instead of doing this we're gonna put a cover here to block these and we'll basically set it up so that ah, not you there so one two three you guys will output and go up here So anything that gets automatically processed will go like so. There we go. That should work. Do I have any ores or anything that I can pulverize real quick? Just to prove that this works, uh, I can probably pulverize none of this stuff. Can you pulverize Ventium more? No. Uh, no. Yeah, I think that's smelting only. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Pulverizer gives you two Ventium dust. All right, well, that's enough for me. That's fine. I'll deal with that. Um, I just want to make sure that it pulls out correctly with this, because I always get confused with machines that push stuff out and what mode your item duct needs to be in before it can actually send items. Same. It sent? Yep, so it go. Cool. Awesome. Yep, there it goes. And it went over here, and it probably will land somewhere and then get pulled into the uh, little suction thing here. By the way, I wanted to show you guys something that I'm pretty excited that we have access to. It's these little mirrors right here. These are Essentia mirrors. So instead of being able to teleport items, they can teleport Essentia. And the way they work is if there's any machines that require Essentia, like the Infernal Furnaces, um, and you have on the other side an Essentia mirror that has like a water jar with the Essentia it needs, that little bubble wisp of magical Essentia can travel through the mirror. So you put your, uh, you know, resource, your, your fire ignis aspect here. The little thing will zip through there and feed the furnaces over here. How cool is that? I built a really complicated system in my single player world to do just that. And now there's mirrors for it. So once we get mirrors, I'll probably use it. And anyway. the range on them is epic. The range is really good. Is it good? 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight on all three axes. Up, nice. down, left, right. It's really good. Square radius. Yeah. So if you put the mirror in the middle, it's eight in all full di all six directions. Oh, okay. And it's the same on the other side as well. It'll feed any machine within eight blocks of. That's cool. Yeah, it's really good. All right, that's all kinds of silly. Tesseracts require bronze? Yes. Okay. Or I think it's called engineer's metal or something. Neat. I have to teach my assistant how to make bronze then. <laughs> oh well. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll teach that thing later. For now, we do have automated Tesseracts, and we did automate pretty much most of what we're probably going to want to automate. I uh, you know threw a couple extra recipes in here off camera, like uh, nether quartz dust and how to make... 
uh, and me encoded patterns for the silicon and for basic processors, so stuff like that that we're definitely going to want to have. So I'm pretty pleased. We got a lot done this episode. Um, next episode is when we'll have to do the uh, quarry, though, because I don't think we have enough time. We have to wrap up today. Unfortunately, sorry to say, I think it is wrapping up point. So for now, uh, Dial20 signing off. I'll have to replace this thing. I'm going to clean up my inventory here. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, we'll be back next time. I definitely want to check out the new, 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 new quarries. Um, they're made by RW Tema, and let's take a look at them real quick. What's involved in making one of these? Ender quarry. So we need uh, some kind of sapling, just any sapling. They're not complicated to make. They're really quite Ender simple. infused obsidian, ender core, diamond etched computational matrix, ender thermic pumps. All right, not terrible. Definitely a couple diamonds required, but you would expect that. Diamond pickaxe, a couple diamonds here. So I'm guessing it's a similar amount of diamonds. I think it's a bit cheaper than a BC quarry. Oh, you need a magical wood. Um, Magical wood is a lot cheaper than it used to be now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's four enchanted books. I can... Uh, yeah, the strength of the book also determines how much magical wood you get out in the result. Oh, really? So if I put, like, a level 30 book in there, I'll get more wood than... Yep. Uh, yeah, but don't bother. Just use level ones. It's not worth... It's The increase is not worth spending extra levels. No. We tried it out. It was, you might as well just use level ones. How much do you get out of all level ones? Uh, well, you just get one piece of wood per level one book, don't you? And oh, it, okay. But if you do like a level thirty, you get like four pieces out. So it's just not worth the, you know, the extra twenty nine levels to get three extra wood. Because I did all four books as level threes and got eight, I think. Oh, maybe it, you, yeah, maybe at three it kicked up into two. I didn't test that one. Yeah. Because level three books are kind of yeah, that easy would be fine. Level three would be cool if you can get double that, double it. That would be kind of cool. Um. All right, guys. So wrapping up point. Like I said, hope you enjoyed the episode. Dial twenty signing off. Take it easy.